If you look at these three images, what they all have in common is that they're representing things much larger or smaller than the images themselves. For example, the United Kingdom isn't really three centimeters wide, and neither is a cell or a horse. We've just made them smaller or larger than the real things so that we can show them neatly on the space of the screen. However, the important thing to notice is that the images are to scale, which means that all of the proportions are correct. For example, the horse's height relative to its length is correct. There's a bit of confusion around what we call images like this, because it depends on what type of image we have. If we have a photo, then we just call it a photo, because they should always be to scale. When we have a drawing that's to scale though, we call it a scale drawing. And when we have a diagram that's to scale, we call it a scale diagram. Although in the special case of a map, we can also just call it a map as well. Now, something else that all scale diagrams or maps should have is some kind of scale or key, which allows you to work out the real life distances that the images represent. There's a few different ways they can do this, but the main ones are these three. This first type is the easiest to work with, and in this case, it just means that every one centimeter on your map or drawing represents five kilometers in real life. So two centimeters would represent 10 kilometers, three centimeters would represent 15 kilometers, and so on. The second one, one to 600, is basically a ratio, and means that everything on the image is 600 times smaller than the real thing. Or in other words, every one centimeter on the image would be 600 centimeters in real life. So we could rewrite it as one centimeter equals 600 centimeters, or even one centimeter equals six meters, because 600 centimeters and six meters are the same distance. This last type is the trickiest of the three, but just means that this distance here represents 20 kilometers. So what we normally do is measure the line with a ruler, which in this case would be 2.5 centimeters, and then we know that every 2.5 centimeters represents 20 kilometers, which is a much easier scale to use. And if you wanted, you could make it even easier by dividing both sides by 2.5 to find that one centimeter represents eight kilometers. Now that we've covered the basics, let's have a go at a couple of exam questions. So in this question, we're being asked to use the map to find the distance between the two points A and B. And if we look at our map, we can see the two points they're talking about, and we can also see the scale in the bottom right corner, which says one to 500, which means that our diagram is 500 times smaller than in real life. Now, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is change the one to 500 to one centimeter equals 500 centimeters, because it means exactly the same thing, but it will be a bit easier to work with later. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is find the distance between A and B on our diagram, which we can do by measuring it with a ruler. And on my screen, that's nine centimeters. Then because we know from our scale that each one centimeter on our diagram represents 500 centimeters in real life, we can work out what that nine centimeters must represent. So because nine centimeters is nine times bigger than one centimeter, we also have to multiply the 500 centimeters by nine to get 4,500 centimeters. And then to finish, all we need to do is convert that into meters by dividing it by 100 to get 45 meters. So we now know that the points A and B are 45 meters apart in real life. Okay, let's try a slightly different one this time. In this question, we're told that the image below is a scale drawing of Jennifer's garden, where each centimeter on the diagram represents 0.5 meters in the real world. And for part A, we're being asked to find the area of the patio in square meters. Now, you might have noticed that they've done this drawing over a grid, and they actually do this quite a lot in exams, where each square is often one centimeter by one centimeter. 
and this makes it easier for us to measure distances. However, the squares could also be different sizes, so it's always worth checking with a ruler. For this question, we'll assume that the squares are all 1 cm by 1 cm. So, in order to find the area of the patio, we're first of all going to need to find the real length and real width, because we'll then be able to multiply them together to get the area. To do this, we first need to measure how long they are on our diagram, which we can do using a ruler, which would give us 8 cm and 6 cm, or by counting the squares, which would give us the same thing, because remember, each square is 1 cm. And now that we have these values from the drawing, we can convert them into real life values. So because one centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.5 meters, eight centimeters, which is eight times larger, must be four meters. While six centimeters, which is six times larger, must be three meters. So in real life, the patio area is four meters long and three meters wide. And lastly, because the area of a rectangle is equal to its length times its width, we just do 4 times 3 to find that the area of the patio is 12 square meters. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that a common mistake with this type of question in exams is to find the area of the drawing in square centimeters and then try to convert that value straight to square meters, which unfortunately doesn't work. For example, if we found the area of the drawing by doing the length of 8 centimeters times the width of 6 centimeters to get 48 square centimeters, we couldn't then use our scale to convert that to 24 square meters, because our scale only converts centimeters to meters, not square centimeters to square meters. If we rub all of this working out, let's have a go at a part B before we finish. This one says that Jennifer wants to have a 1 meter by 1 meter square pond installed. And we need to draw the pond onto the scale drawing. So this is kind of the opposite of part A. This time we're converting from real life values of 1 meter by 1 meter to the scale drawing values. So if 1 centimeter is 0 0.5 meters, and our pond has a side length of 1 meter, that's 2 times bigger. So on our drawing, it will be 2 centimeters, which means that all we have to do is draw a 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter square somewhere on this diagram. For example, down here or over here. It doesn't really matter where, you just need to plop it on and then label it pond. Hey everyone, Amadeus here. I just wanted to let you know that we also have a learning platform where you can watch all of our videos, practice what you've learned with questions, and keep track of all of your progress for both the sciences and maths. It's completely free, so if you haven't already, you can check it out by clicking on our logo here on the right. Or if you'd like to do the lesson for this particular video, we put the link to that in the description down below. We've also arranged all of the videos for this subject in a playlist for you here. That's all though, so hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.